Hello everybody once again, this is Akko Kazoo and welcome to the level 50 dancer with our Blade Dancer and Spirit Dancer Showcase as well as our Bishop Nance Solo so if you, have, if you have not watched the Dark Summoner Soul Eater Showcase make sure you go watch that one first and yup I'm actually wearing a very interesting wing and weapons here I think this will be available to Dragon Nest C live servers on the patch of Kali and we all know how you can only get this thing so I don't know if spoil the surprise will leave it to the official announcement but yeah these things will be available to you and just show you guys the stats for now doesn't give you I mean it doesn't change your attacks to dark element just FYI but let's get to the Kali Dancer Blade Dancer first so I'll talk about the Dancer for the Kali side of the tree for the Dark Summoner Soul Eater I actually went for the Sparen you know but for PvP Kali I would say you get it to level 1, but if you are PvE, most likely you do not need to get this skill. You can actually don't keep it, but I think it's quite useful to keep your target hittable for PvP, so I'm going to get one here. So regarding negative goals, I think I'll cut in a short video here to show you that it does not have any effect on player, as you can see on the skill description. And I don't know why I failed to read that sentence until today. So I've tried to cast on a player, there's no form of silence or anything, you just get a flinch on the target. But I think it's going to work on stuff like Alfredo, Mecha Ducks and all sorts of things. Not too sure about the towers that the Game Master summon, but yeah, probably work on summons and non-player monsters basically, so not going to get it as well. And you might want to get Ghost Kick for mobility here, because there are combos that actually uses Ghost Kick for the Dancer class and the usual mixing of those Turning Step and Dummy Ghost. So the thing about this side of the tree for the Kali is you want to get that 45 SP so you can learn your ultimate in the dancer tree. So what I did is I actually got my spirit blow to level 11. I think this skill will be used a lot by the dancer for PvP as well as PvE. It actually gives decent damage since it's based off physical damage as well. It scales pretty well. I would say it's the circle break for the dancer class. So right now you can see I spent 41 SP and learn that genie. So what I did here is actually I learned my MP recovery to max. Reason why I do this is because T4 PvP and HP will be implemented with the release of Kali and you can see that my HP now for competition on for Kali is actually 78,000. It will be higher with this HP mastery. Let me just apply that. It's 87,000. But you realize that the MP values are not changed because in this game, you use skills based off a percentage of your MP. So you can have high MP, but you just spend the same percentage. You will not affect your recovery that much, but having a larger MP pool actually increases your MP recovery so I think in PvP if you want to have I would say more time because PvP battles is going to last a lot longer you might want to have that MP recovery for the Dancer class so I actually decided to go for the level 3 Mind Conquer to get the 45 SP and you can't get Spirit Blow level 16 and level 50 as well so highest is level 14 so I decided to go for level 11 so let's take a look at the Dancer tree now so let's get learn all these skills level 1 first so we do not need to cycle through them same like the soul eater and the dark summoner video so things to note grace dance no change in cooldowns at level 6 you can see it's the same for pvp and pve so just fyi but i'm gonna get this skill i'm gonna leave it at 1 first so i can show you guys the difference in cooldown for sweet circle let's check it out level 6 no change as well and no special effect as well. You can get it to up to level 11 in level 50, but I would say it's not worthwhile to get it to level 11 now. Twingo Spin for PvP, take note, okay, take note. This skill does not decrease in cooldown at level 6, look. Same cooldown, and you can get it higher. So I would say level 6 will be enough if you are a person that you think you're going to utilize this a lot, like the Acrobat Double Somersault Kick, you can get it to 6. And for the next skill, which is Refreshing Screw, Oh, it's Daily Drill, my bad. They changed the name, I think. I remember it was called Refreshing Screw. Yeah, but they changed the name of Daily Drill. But anyways, so Daily Drill, you can see that when you get it to level 6, same thing, the cooldown for PvE actually drops. Oh, I forgot to mention, Twinkle Spin as well. For PvE, the cooldown changes. Wait, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so for Twinkle Spin, no change, 15 seconds all the way, but for Daily Drill, the cooldown actually decreases at level 6. Let me just show you level 1 again. Level 1 is 16. Does it drop? I remember it dropped. Indeed, it is. PvE, 14 seconds, and PvP is the same. So, for this skill, you can see that the physical damage attack percentage power is pretty decent. Up to 28%. 
But the thing about the skill is it works like line drive. No, it doesn't work like line drive, but it works in such a way where the last hit for that skill, if you look at the animation here, the last attacking blow is the one that does like I would say 80% of the damage. And it's not easy to get that skill to actually register or hit on target, so I would say if you're a PvE player or you're a PvP player, this can be used as more of a mobility skill instead of I think it's a combo connecting skill instead of a DPS skill. But Elegant Storm definitely you want to max it, but same thing, level 6, no change in cooldown. Most level 32 skills are like this. So we go to the next one. How about Breeze Core Dance? So Breeze Core Dance, there's a difference as you increase the level. The final damage actually increases for the PvP. But no, for the PvE, it starts off at 40%. So I think what they said and mentioned is you want to get this skill to at least level 6 for that 50% final damage increase. To recover 3% of the total HP as well. And all damage received reduced by 15%. You can get it up to level 8 for same 50% but you recover 4% HP. So I'm thinking if you get the level 11 in the future at 60 cap, probably you need a skewing I think. Because at 55 maybe you can level it up to 9 and then 60 get it up to 10 and then skewing get it up to 11. That's where the final damage increase will be up to 60% probably. That's when it's useful. So I'm going to keep it at 6 here. But take note that the PvP version of the final animation increase is only 25%. Very useful skill. I think in the previous video, Dragon Dance Blog actually told me that I didn't use this skill a lot in connecting my blade skills, which is why the damage was not high at all. So definitely gonna be doing that more often in my RPG Nest solo, definitely. Senior turn, same thing. PvP no change in cooldown, but PvE there is. Let me just show you. For every level you add actually drops 12.5, level 5, 13. Level 4, 13.5. So every level you add for PvE, it actually drops by 0.5 seconds. I would say it's a very useful mobility skill, but in PvE, do you really need so much mobility? And this one needs you to actually tumble first, and then use a, a right click. So if a tumble is on cooldown, you can't use it anyway. So I would say 15 seconds will be fine for PvP and PvE since they, the PvP cooldown does not change. Alright, misstep. Misstep, level 6. No, you can't get to level 6. So I can't see if the cooldown actually drops for PvP. But for PvE, same thing. I think the cooldown actually drops. Let me just check. Scroll down. 17 seconds, 16. Yep. So every level actually drops the cooldown by 1 second. So if you are going for a pure PvE build, these are the things that you want to take into consideration. Alright, Illusion done. Same thing. If you increase it up to level 6, you can get the extra final damage increase as well as the HP recovered. And you can get up to level 8 as well. So I'm not too sure if it's viable to actually max both of these. It's going to be pretty crazy if you think about it. But if you max both of these, you're going to have trouble maxing skills like... Let's try it out, okay. Level 6 Elegant Storm, level 6 General Dunblade. So you already use 70 SP. So if you get our Grace Call, I mean our Grace Nuns to level 11, 80 SP spend. And these are the stuff that you definitely want. Aesthetic Dance, max it definitely. Look at the Goose Summoned for PvP. It's extra 252 damage. And for PvE, it's 2520. One extra zero at the end there. That means every attack that your friends do is additional 2.5k damage per hit. I think it's even better than Bone Crash if I'm not wrong for this one. And if you get a skill ring for it, you can actually go up to 3360. And if you right click, you get a heal. And if you want to go for the Aesthetic Dance Part 2, which works like final, I um, mean, finish attack where you can get up to 70% increase in damage for every 1% HP reduction of enemies. You can get this as well. And finally, the Aesthetic Dance Part 3, which is the Minotaur. I'm thinking because this skill has a 1.5 minute cooldown, if you use it with, let's say, skills like Beyond Time, just maybe you can get the Minotaur out and then one of the other two out together. Have not tried, so this is something to be considered, definitely. So now you can see a very generic PvE build that goes around Elegant Storm, General Dunblade, and Grace Dance. You see, but you see that the other skills, you can't get it to high level, so that's the problem here. So let's say we get this to level 6 for both. That means we are satisfied with level 6. This is like a pure PvE damage build. Maybe we get Twinkle Spin to 6 here for more damage. And Sir Free Dancer, arguably whether you should get it to 6 for Blade Dancer. Personally, I won't go level 6 for Surfy Dancer even though the damage will be probably pretty good. But since you're Blade Dancer, you want to focus more on the left side of the tree. So same thing, what you want to consider if, is if you want the Illusion Dance. 
to be level 6 because you're going to be using it with this only with general dumb bait because the illusion dance will only affect spirit enhancement skills like this one final damage increases in spirit enhancement state and the illusion dance enhancement state does not work with blade skills so it's like you're getting level 6 illusion dance just for general dumb blade so is that worth it it's really up to you because you can get this down I think the dam damage for Adrenaline Double is already very decent without the Illusion Dance and you can just get skills like Deadly Drill up to level 6 and definitely I would say maybe Sweet Circle in the future to with the Sweet Circle EX maybe a lot of DPS for Blade Dancer so for now I'm just going to try put it at 6 to see how this build is going to go let me just check is everything cool because if you don't want to get level 6 of this you can get Sabi Dancer level 6. So it's like a, a boosted general dance blade or a level 1 illusion dance with Sabi Dancer. I would say that it's just a 10% increase in final damage and you already have a skill to recover HP so I think I'll get this to 6 instead. Yeah, probably a better choice here. And we'll see how it goes. So I have one skill point left here. Then I'll get Elegant Storm maxed. And alright, time for the Blade Dancer skills. Squelf Lacquer, level 2. So this is the Evasion Slash of the Blade Dancer class. Yep, just FYI and we get our Grace Dance EX. Yeah, so we'll just show you guys how the Squelf Lacquer actually works. You can actually press the space bar, which is the jump key to, uh, to activate it in all attack motions. This is the same for Evasion Slash. And you can press a normal attack to turn and jump up. So Evasion Slash usually gets, gets you a flinch on a, a target that has no super armor like this but for the squelf lacquer or flaker let me just get it on the hot key bar one sec put it on T so let's say I'm casting sting breeze I can press space button and get this and press my left click button to get a free uplift it is pretty badass and if you look at the skill description invincible 4.5 seconds when activated basically it's like evasion slash iframe but right now they are telling you out there that that's how it works so any skill spacebar left click you can imagine the pvp combinations you can do with the squelf flaker it's gonna be awesome cancel that way and go straight up i would say it's a free you can bait let's say you're baiting someone with let's say sweet circle this is elegance i mean this grace dance ex and they might think that you're doing a long casting animation cancel it with the squelf flicker and then counter with the uplift not too sure how much is that super armor breaking but i would say it's not probably not too high it's gonna be like poison charging i guess but it's definitely good for counter classes i mean to do in a counter so that's squelf flicker for you hopefully i'm pronouncing it correctly and the next skill hurricane gust I would say it's my all-time favorite skill. <laughs> Shall we do this, guys? Basically, I'll call it the grounder rolling attack. You see what I mean? And I know what you guys are gonna say. That was badass. And what's the best part about the skill? You can actually control the rolling attack direction. You know, rolling attacks like you just spin. It's a one-off direction. You can choose. Yeah, you know I mean. So. The problem about the Hurricane Gust, or not the problem, the good thing about the Hurricane Gust is you can control and direct your Hurricane Gust while it's moving. So just watch it again. So you can actually throw the guy and sort of turn it. But you need to make sure that you don't actually get him out of the, the spinning effect. So you can turn him slightly. We can't really make him into a circle. Let's try the circle thing. I'm gonna try it. Okay, so you can't really turn him in a circle because he's gonna fall out of it. But in some sense, I think you can do a diagonal, diagonal movement. So you can actually drag him towards a wall at least. Guess not. But definitely very useful. So Hurricane Gus, I'm rolling into deep. This is definitely one skill. I'm not too sure about how strong is the super armor breaking effect. If it's high, it's not. I mean, it's quite easy to be used. Look. Flinch, and there you go, that's how easy it is. But of course, if you've got your air evasion, the guy can just air evade out of it. So, the thing is, if you air evade out of it, and you can direct the direction of the hurricane gust, you probably can catch the guy again. 
Yup, so Hurricane Gust, one of the reasons why many people want to be the Blade Dancer in the first place because I think the damage is quite OP for PvP and PvE and for PvE it's like, oh I'm drilling to the boss! Roar, roar. And you get an explosion at the end too. And you can imagine the damage you do with the... Let's try it. Okay, so just now was I think 200 damage per tick. So it's 200. Alright, so... Just know that in the dummy for the combo practice room, you can't really do a lot of damage. It's like super reduced da reduce damage on the dummy for some reason. So let's do our this rescore dance, right? Rescore dance. And look at the damage. Extra 50 damage per hit. It's supposed to be 50% more damage, I think. No, 25% more damage. And that's a 25% for you. So Hurricane Gas, awesome. So the last skill will be the Grace Dance EX. So Grace Dance in the first place was very very slow. If you watch my level 24 showcase, you can see that it was a skill that can do a wall bounce. But that's it. But with the Grace Dance EX, you essentially can cast it. You can see there's a mini suction effect on the skill and it keeps the target heatable. So it's very very good for all combos. Let me just do a short example. So in the past, we did this. Oops, that was a fail. Try that again, just got my cooldowns. So we do a flinch. One, two. Do a crazy dance, turn around, and look at how the body actually bounced there. Yeah, it's pretty... I would say at least one and a half second for you to gather your direction, sense of direction. Connected this, I guess. Hurricane Gas, guys. So this is the Blade Dancer skills. I don't want to talk too much about this part of the video because I think you guys just want to check out the how this skills actually hit in PVE. Definitely, there'll be a written guide for the skill build for both the Blade Dancer and the Spirit Dancer. So let's get to the Spirit Dancer skills now. Right, right now we are in our Spirit Dancer side of the showcase, and right now we show you the Spirit Dancer three skills. We have White Stinger, Praetor and Stalker EX. So let's talk about White Stinger first. Look at the skill description. Continuously shoots in front to give damage and give soul enhancement effect to oneself. Soul enhancement affects Praetor and General Dance Blade critical probability. And the critical probability is increased by 90% and this lasts for 10 whole seconds. So most importantly White Stinger is affected by Spirit Enhancement State as well. So let's try White Stinger without our Illusion Dance. 84, 84, 84, 512. So let's try with our illusion dance now. Let me get my illusion dance out. Just get the cooldown food. Now it's 100 and 600, so it's almost twice the damage. And now we get the illusion dance with White Stinger. Okay, let's look at the general dance blade. Not normal damage. 700, 700, 1.9. Right, so with the Illusion Dance and White Stinger, we go straight to General Dance. Look at that, 3 crits in a row there, critical chance increased by 90% for both PP and PVE. That is huge. Very, very huge, in fact. So we try again with our Illusion Dance. Yeah, white singer. And we go straight to Praetor. Oh my goodness. 1.3, 1.3, 4.1. So don't look at the damage. The damage on the combo practice arena dummy. Actually it's not a lot. It's not reflective of actual competition on damage. But you can see that it's all three crits in a row. So white stinger so enhancement state. Remember to use it with general dun blade and the Praetor skill. Of course, use Illusion Dance beforehand to increase and rack up the damage, final damage definitely. So let's go straight to Praetor here. Praetor slams the ground 3 times to give powerful damage to nearby enemies and make them stun. Stun probability 50% for both PvP and PvE and final damage increases when in Spirit Enhancement state. And you can combine it with White Stinger for that Soul Enhancement for higher critical probability. Up to 90%. Madness if you tell me. So imagine if we get... Illusion Dance, White Stinger, followed by Praetor. 
yeah, it's pretty badass, honestly, guys. And you can see that that's 1.1, 1.1, 3.8. So you can see without the white stinger, look at how small damage the damage is now 600, 600, 2.1. So you definitely want to connect that white stinger for that critical probability as well as your illusion dance. And my illusion dance is level 6 for the extra final damage. I didn't get it to level 8 because it doesn't increase the final damage, it's still 50%. So I think leaving it at 6 will be fine. So yep, that is the two skills for the Spirit Dancer and finally Stalker EX. The non-EX version is just a flinch when he hits the target but right now for Stalker EX, if you read the skill description, it says Explosion area increase and enemies are hit up into the air when the explosion occurs. Basically, you get a free hit up into the air. Bam. Yup. 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, you can see all the massive burst damage that a Spirit Dancer can do right now. So don't say Blade Dancer is for PvE. I mean for PvP and the Spirit Dancer is for PvE. Don't count the Spirit Dancer out of PvP just yet. It can be very very deadly if you land the White Stinger with the Praetor and General Dumblade. It's gonna be huge damage guys. So I think that's it for the Spirit Dancer side of the house and let's go straight into the skill build, general skill build showcase for the Blade Dancer and Spirit Dancer with the Archbishop Ness normal solo run. Alright, we come to the Blade Dancer general PvE. I would say generic skill build, or I just say generic in front, but here, if you saw my earlier part of the video, for Akali side, I got my Spirit Blow to 11, and I got my Mind Conqueror 1, Mental Mastery 1, I said Mind Conqueror 3, because T4 HP for PvP, I mean for MP, might be a problem here with the increase in base HP, and basically get 45 SP, that's the idea you want to get in your Kali tree for level 50 cap. So I have one spare skill point, I'm not going to use it just yet. But let's take a look at the Dancer tree. Level 11, Grace Dance. Level 6, Twinkle Spin, because I think I'm going to be using it for a lot in PvP. The DSK version for the Dancer. And I actually got Deadly Drill or Refreshing Screw to the level 6, because I told you guys initially that the damage bulk of the damage actually comes in the last hit of the attack. And, yep, that's the part where people can't really get to do so. So I'm going to get it to 6 to see if I can connect this skill, if I can. Elegant Storm 7 standard, and I actually got my Breeze Call Dance to level 6 for the 10% increase in final damage for your Blade skills when you get yourself into Blade Enhancement State. Illusion Dance level 1 here, because I was thinking that if you get it to 6, it's only a 10% increase, and both of my DPS skills are on the Blade Dancer side of the tree, and I'm probably going to be using the Illusion Dance with General Dance Blade only, so that 10% increase, not really that useful. So the change off here is you can get Daily Drill to 1 and get Surfree Dancer to 6 so you have a 40% um, final, final damage increase for 2 skills in the Spirit Dancer side while your Breeze Call Dance works for Twinkle Spin and the Elegant Storm so instead of getting this to 6 you get your Surfree Dancer to 6 so you get 2 DPS skills with the boost of that 40% using the Illusion Dance instead of that 10% increase for 1 skill only so I think that makes sense so if you want your daily drill, you can get your Surfy Dancer to level 6. Max my Aesthetic Dance and all the part 1 and 2 and part 3 because this is definitely very useful in a PvE setting in a party. This is probably what will get you into a party and raid. So definitely want to max this out. It's in a separate tree, take note. So you do not need to take the Spirit Dancer side just to learn this part. You can totally ignore here and learn this part here. Blade Dancer, standard stuff, 2 for Swell Flicker and Hurricane Dance and Grace Dance EX. So just take a look at my equipment here. So same thing as my Soul Eater and Dark Summoner showcase, plus 6 GDN armors. And then plus 10 weapons here. Perfect potentials for everything basically. And I hit 19,000 critical and 13.6k P attack. Final damage only 3%, so not much of a big deal here. So no final damage build for this character. And I think we'll go straight to our Archbishop Ness solo run. So yep, we are in the Blade Dancer Archbishop Ness solo run. Let's get to that. Deadly Drill. Awesome. Grace Dun EX. Pretty awesome there as well. Spell Flicker with the uplift as well. Twinkle Spin. 
So far the damage is good. And another Deadly Drill. So Deadly Drill, not really that hard to use, I guess. Based off my Elegant Storm here. Deadly Drill. Just gonna wait for the invulnerability thing to end. And force it off the boss. Oops, sneak out now. So I'm gonna show you guys something epic very soon. Come on, become a vulnerable boss. There you go, this is the one I'm talking about. So it's over. Time for some kick ass moments. That is what I mean by a kick ass moment. Hurricane Gust, guys. 25,000 per tick. And with the final damage enhancement with that Breeze Core Dance. Got a cooldown plate for that one as we go to the next boss. Let's show them some dodging skills with a Squall Flanker. Maybe not because of the mushrooms. I'll be using it for the final tick. Twenty hits, guys. That is close to five hundred thousand damage, I guess. And every time you use Breeze Core Dance, you heal four thousand HP. Say you're the only one that can roll because I'm rolling in the deep very soon. So I'm gonna tank the damage. And look at that. 368. 36,000 damage per tick. That's close to 720,000 damage, guys. Time to reroll. And you can heal while moving as well. You can see that I'm not using General Dumbly a lot because the Illusion Dance cooldown shares with the. Breeze Core Dance, and this is why I guess it's not. There's no point maxing both the Illusion Dance and Breeze Core Dance. So if you're wondering why we shouldn't, there you have it. Because you share the same cooldown, and as a Blade Dancer, you have enough Blade skills to keep you occupied until the Breeze Core Dance actually comes off cooldown. Eighty-eight thousand damage per take with the buff. Everyone hits this person. I hit her very much with a vengeance. Don't get myself losing all my mana. But yeah. I think I let the boss cast his DA. But it's cool, because I'm gonna do something awesome. No! Okay, to do it, guys. But, let's go. Omni Slash. 2 dead. 3 dead. 4 dead. Oh, snap. But I lost a lot of my HP. Well, I can hit it back, no worries. So, Blade Dancer kicking ass. Definitely, guys. The DPS is very, very high. I'm gonna try to do the Dark Elf. I didn't quite show you guys because I got this cancelled there. 
show you the dark elf final damage or rather finish attack effect like bonus it's very very useful to show you guys at the next boss the best part about the skill is doesn't come off effect like you know finish attack it only comes on after hit certain hp this one is just one percent of the hp of the boss anytime so you can start you can start at the start but of course you want to get the boss down to as low hp as possible Did. You did? Don't think I'm using Twinkle Spin enough. One reason I don't really like Twinkle Spin is because at the end of the spin itself doesn't really how do I say? Doesn't feel so good because it takes a while to land. Where's that monster? There it is. I'm just gonna use Elephant Storm here because these guys are irritating. Hello! Just let him cast his little fiery skill first. Dodge. Come on, cast that skill. No? Okay, so. Ouch! So you can see the Grace Dance EX, the damage actually comes from the starting damage, not the end. Look okay, at the extra damage already! Close to 40,000 per hit already. Comes. Gonna wait for the spinning thing first. Yeah, perfect timing, guys. So, after it spins, finish. One, two, one, two. Get this out. And look at that. 30,000 extra damage, and he's gonna die now. Look at that. You're doing half your skill damage for every hit. Late dancer. Can you imagine this for your whole party? For your every hit. Everybody gets a finish attack debuff. Just just think think about that for for a second. That's madness, honestly. I think Kali definitely needs to be in a raid, I guess. Be, be it Soul Eater Dark Summoner. Or is it Dancer or Spirit Dancer? I mean play dancer or spirit dancer. So the only thing about this part is I have no idea how to break these things. Yeah, on time, so I'm kinda screwed. You can see the abolisher didn't break it. I'm kinda Yeah, I'm screwed, I think. I only got two down. Oh not yet. General dump it. And the last smack didn't do it. I'm gonna get exploded, guys, I'm sorry. Failed. Shoes up. This time I'm gonna try to do the Manticore Gravity Ball one shot. Managed to do it, but no point, it's too late. So let's try to end his life. No, didn't quite end his life. So basically, I'm screwed. Totally missed there, my goodness. Last Hunter! Nope! 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 I'm dead. <laughs> Sorry guys. Someone can leave in the comments below, how can you avoid that? As a Blade Dancer. For right now, Hurricane does. Shit, I messed it up. Nevertheless, we are fine. And we go straight to the boss. So leave in the comments below how do we break those pillars if you know you played CDN and someone actually told you. Use my evasion slash there nicely. Hey, I dodged that.
actually quite annoying I'm trying to just not get hit. No, I got hit. Oh, I hate this part. This is just a time waster. Oh, not really. If you get caught. And then they have to poison the card. Look at my HP. Can I get some back? Okay, we got that down. Let's get our Rekin Dance up first. I don't even know if I managed to summon my... On. No, I didn't make it, guys. It was close. Talk a one shot it. Face that true. Begin the move. Oh, snap. I'm alive. Don't worry, guys. I'm alive. Three pounds. Almost, almost flopped that one. No, it was just so close from breaking. Snap, got smacked by the hand again. I'm talking ghosts. Oh, yeah, it's down, guys. I think we didn't really get the elf out just now. Probably gonna die either this skill. Yeah, elegant storm. Graceful colors linked to the death of the Archbishop boss. Hurricane Gas, everybody, that's the Blade Dancer for you. Awesome shit, kicking ass. Rolling into the deep as well. And I didn't really see the time. Was it 12 minutes? Definitely faster than the Dark Summoner and Soul Eater if I'm not wrong. Oh, go chess as well. So if you guys like this Blade Dancer solo, next up will be the Spirit Dancer, so make sure you watch it as well. To help you give an idea which class you want to get for PvE. We'll get to the PvP later when I'm more familiar with the class. So let's get to the Spirit Dancer straight away and remember to leave in the comments, let me know how do we handle the pillars because I don't know which skills. Unlike the Dark Summoner and Soul Eater, you can kind of figure it out through the the super breaking skills but for the blade dancer not too many skills that looks like it can break heavy super armor so let's go to the spirit dancer straight away so right now we're talking about the spirit dancer skill tree so this is my generic spirit dancer pve kind of skill build same thing for the kali side same as the blade dancer level 11 spirit blow get the 45 sp here and you're set for the dancer side get up to elegant storm level 7 DPS for this skill is very high, but actually a lot higher if you actually use it with Breeze Core Dance. But this is the only skill in this side of the tree where we actually use, so Breeze Core Dance is at level 1. While for Spirit Dancer, you focus more on the Spirit side of the tree. So, Jaren Dun Blade 7. Surfy Dancer, level 6. You can get it to level 8 at level 50, but you can you know that for the new T4 system, skills increase exponentially at level 6 and 11, so I'm just going to keep it at 6. Aesthetic Dance 3, maxed. And actually got my Dust Hunter to level instead of my Stalker because Dust Hunter has a wider AoE range compared to the Stalker. So I'm just gonna get Stalker to level 6 to get the EX version and keeping it at 6 but Dust Hunter level 11 has a very fast cooldown 11 seconds and the percentage is about 488% compared to the 267%. Right and Illusion Dance level 6 here and I guess that's it for this side of the tree. Didn't learn my Omni Slash, got my Storm of Imania instead. And Spirit Dancer, standard stuff, 2 points to White Stinger and 1 point for Praetor. So that's it for the skill tree in general. And we'll go straight to the Archbishop Nest run itself. So I forgot to mention about the gears. So the gears, same thing as my Blade Dancer. Actually, I just drop change, so all the items are the same. Just want to take a look at the Heavy Trees. 
We have Illusion Dance, 20% cool, 12% cooldown. Storm of Arena, 20% damage. Praetor, 20% damage. And I think I forget to get the... Where's this guy? General Dumbly. Yep, 20% damage. So let's move on. So let's see our Stalker EX. 67,000, not too bad. But you can see the Dust Hunter, pretty good as well. White Stinger. Not really impressed with the damage, but you know that it is not a damage skill, it's to get the Soul Enhancement State. And I didn't use it with my Illusion Dance there just now. Just using this for allows to clear monsters. So activate this invulnerability stick first. Oh no. Should get out in time. 2x HP bar there. And that was pretty tall, but not his best DPS capabilities. Get a soul enhancement state. Probably you get a general damage Q. One, two, spam. 283,000 damage there, Jared with the Illusion Dance, 50% final damage increase, definitely must use that together. So the difference between Spirit Dancer and Blade Dancer will be the lack of the Squall Flagger, so that's actually the reason why they say it's a PvP compared to the Spirit Dancer at 50 cap. So many creep resists. Oops. Gotta dodge that. The mushrooms are coming out soon. Yeah, we have the mushrooms here. Pass out a safe corner. Let's get the genie out. Since we don't use it in the next boss. Extra damage there. Get the Sephi Dancer to finish it off. So if you watch the Blade Dancer side, you know that the Dark Elves for the aesthetic dance is really very really useful. Very very useful. Heal myself. And we come to the Power Rangers stage. Not my favorite if you watch the Dark Summoner and Soul Eater because of the this cutscene. You can't skip it, man. They should allow you to skip it, definitely. <laughs> oh, the Stalker EX actually kept him finished for quite a while. I just want to finish this. Her off the set. Yep, she's gone. Gonna lose all my MP. Oh, look at that. The cool blood magician actually almost died. My goodness. Oops. Oh, there's the, the boss actually died. Another boss died. See his low HP. My ultimate out. I want to go for the Adolf. Preacher Adolf. Turn back. Hello, Assassin Bonita. Oh, you want some Praetor action? I'll give it to you. I can't really see Praetor's damage so far. If you compare it to Hurricane Gust, I would say Hurricane Gust is winning in terms of raw damage, but know that Praetor cast time is a lot faster. It's just 3 hits and you can get out of there, but for Hurricane Gust, to do that max damage, you need to be attacking and spinning for at least 20 hits. And most likely, if a boss is casting a skill, you will not be able to do all 20 hits because you need to cancel it midway. So take note of that. Damage might be just a wee bit lower compared to Hurricane Gust, but it's attacked a lot faster so you can do the burst damage and just get out extremely quickly. Yeah, so free dancers like awesome. 
it's gonna work very well on large bosses, I would guess. And Stalker EX BPS is actually not that shabby, to be honest. In general, Gunblade. Gunblade, I mean, it's just. good. So it's a lot smoother for the Blade and Spirit Dancer until the pillar stage. So if you watch the stage just now, you'll know that it was quite fun. Uh, now you get to see the damage. I would say now it's close to the Blade Dancer after you saw that damage. 400k at the last hit. That's pretty mad. Baron Dumbledore's damage is just massive, to be honest. No, it's okay. We get our extra damage, and oh, look at that! Extra 200k, really? Dark Elf, OP guys. That was 600k on the last hit with a 400k flat damage hit and full HP. So just for those who are watching me in the next part, I will not be able to get the pillars. Probably just one with my mental gravity ball, but I still don't know which skills can break the pillars. All of the spot breaking seems to be pretty low. I use skills like White Stinger, the last hit did not break the pillars, so yep, just FYI. Storm's still pretty high, even as a spirit answer. Should get this right. Yeah, I did it right. I'm trying to kill this boss. No! Don't do the last pillar because I can't. <laughs> Snap, guys. Out of time. And let's get carried up there to finish the job. So that's set. Not today. Oh snap! I guess today. Shot it. Oh 
ね。Finish him off with the ulti. Jump dodge like a boss. Dang it. Oh, it's just behind me. I knew it. And I'm silenced with my dummy goes. Off. I'm gonna try to do this. Okay, we got those out. Okay. And this die. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. How much damage am I doing? I don't know. But Bandian, this is for you. Storm of Evenia kill. <laughs> So this spirit dancer for you, 12 minutes as well. I think I'm more familiar with the dungeon run now with the spirit dancer after doing it on blade dancer. So we'll take it with a pinch of salt, but this will be the spirit dancer Ambisham Nest run solo. So key things to note, make sure you get your illusion dance up in time and I realized something that after you use all your cooldown skills like Praetor and White Stinger and all those DPS skills for the Illusion Dance, there's actually time to use that Breeze Call Dance with your Elegant Storm, so that's something to note I guess. And let me know in the comments once again how to destroy the pillars. Hope you guys enjoyed this level 50 showcase of the Dancer, Spirit Dancer and Blade Dancer. Thanks for watching once again, God bless, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Hello. Phantom Rage, 20k with Grudge Formation. Not today.